Hello, Mass 6 students and Mass 6 parents, in case you're watching with your student at home. Just want to talk about two more questions that were missed a great deal on the Unit 1 formative pretest. Take a look at this next one here. Mrs. Jenkins' class clapped a record of the highest and lowest temperatures in each of five months. See our table here, highest, lowest range. Here's the temperatures listed. Construct a double line graph showing the highest and lowest temperature for each of the five months. So if I take a look, I can see that I'm constructing a double line graph. Many of, being, many of us constructed a bar graph for this one on the pretest, which would explain why we had it wrong. And then we have to construct one for both the highs and the lows over a five-month period. So first thing I'm going to do when I'm constructing this, you had grid paper like this on the assessment. I'm going to give it a title first. I always start with the title. So I'm going to go with high and low temps over five months. Give it a title. That's always a good start to uh, constructing a effective graph. I'm going to shrink the font just a little bit just to make sure that I have enough room to construct this. Now, I'm going to make essentially what it's going to look like a big letter L to start with. I think we're very used to when we make graphs making a rectangle of some sort. We don't always have to have a rectangle. Uh, I'm going to go with something that looks like this. Let's see if this was the right way I want. Yep. So I'm going to go up like this. May I pull it down a little. All right. Now I'm going to come across the other way. So it looks like a big L. Now, whenever constructing a line graph, the time period that we are dis d dissecting or analyzing or discussing always goes, I shouldn't say always, generally tends to go along the x-axis. So my months here are September, I'm going to abbreviate September, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, October, November, December, and January. Okay, I'm going to make a little more space in between these. Again, when you're writing these, it's a little easier. You can have a better idea of the spatial sense on there. Typing this out becomes a little bit more problematic. So, I'm going to make this here, and I must have a label for this. These are all obviously months, so I'll just write underneath here months, if I can spell correctly. And moths, how about months? There we go. All right, now. The other axis will have to be the numbers that fall under September, October, November, December, January. And those have to deal with temperatures. So now here's a trick. Hmm, what am I going to go by here? I see my lowest temp. Now, again, I don't need this necessarily, so I'm going to ignore this right now. I'm looking at temperatures. 81 is my high. Okay, so it has to go at least to 81. My low is 7, so I'm going to have to start at least at 5, if not something in that ballpark. So I can go 0, and I could go by 10s. Let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. That might be my best bet. So 10, and notice how I'm putting the numbers on a line. So that means where that line is, that is 30. Some of you like to put the number in the middle of this box. So that means that whole box is that number. It's always kind of hard for me to interpret that or read that. So I want to make sure that the reader of this understands that that line itself is actually that number. Now I'm going to stretch this just a tag because as I said I have to go to 81. So stretch this up. There we go. Okay. Now I must, this is going to be all temperatures. So I have to give that a label as well. And those are temperatures in Fahrenheit. So I'll put an F there. Twist this around and spin it around. All right. Now, because it's a double line graph, I'm going to have two lines on this. So I may want to make a key. Uh, and you'll see, I'm going to make, and this will make more sense when I do it, I'm going to put the highs in red. So I might put my key up here, red equals high. And then I'll do the lows in blue. Blue equals low. So I'm going to just focus on my highs first in red. So September, we have 81. So I'm going to follow September up here. It'll just be slightly above 80. 
I have October 67. Go to October is there's 60, there's 70. In the middle is 65, so a little bit above the middle. I go November is 57. That falls right on this line. There's 50, there's 60. In the middle is 55, so just slightly above. December is 47. I follow December up to there's 40. <coughs> excuse me, there's 40, there's 50. Go halfway between 45. It's just slightly above 45, or something from 47. And then January is 37. Hmm, interesting. It kind of looks like just a nice gradual straight line down. So you have January being 37. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to connect those lines. You will have access to a ruler if you so desire for the assessment. So going with these lines, and let's make sure it's in red. Going from one to the other. So again, that's why they get the idea of a broken line graph, because lines aren't really straight. They're kind of broken almost. I'm going to just fill my dots in a little bit more there. Just kind of emphasize where exactly that temperature and that month intersect. Okay, I am done with my highs. Now I must graph, and I should say plot and graph, my lows. And I decided to use blue for that. I think a blue is cold. So going back to September, September we have a high of 44. So September, there's 45, just slightly below. And again, that temperature for September should line up with the high. They should be kind of underneath each other. October, the low was 36. 30, 40, 36 would be slightly above the middle. We have November, which is 57. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the high. Don't do that. Look at the low of 27. That makes, I can't have both a high and low of 57. So we have the low is 27, right just barely above the midpoint. Uh, December 7. Can't wait for those temperatures again. And then we have January at 14. Which is right about there. All right. Now, same thing. I'm going to make these dots a little bit bolder this time, so I don't have to go over them the second time. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler, if you so desire, and I'm going to connect the dots. Oh, I'm still on red. Let's go back to blue. Here we are. There's one, two, three, and four. And there is my double line graph. The thing I'm worried about with you guys on the assessment on Thursday or Friday is the temperature, the title, labeling your X and Y axis. And also, remember, if you make a double line graph, you must label which bar reflects which thing. So be careful with that. If you have a bar up here, or a line, I'm sorry, I keep using bar. If you have a line up here, make sure that's identified as the high and then the low. Uh, one more question I want to talk about. This has to do with Mr. Hartwell's running. It says, Mr. Uh, write two statements that are true about Mr. Hartwell's running distances using the history angle below. So if you talk about science, this is just an observation, boys and girls. You are writing a true statement based on what this histogram is giving you. So if I take a look, it says frequency. That means the number of times he does it. And I have miles, distance in miles. So all these have to do with miles. 0 to 5 miles, 6 to 11, 12 to 17, 18 to 23. Uh, one thing I could say real quick here, one statement I notice he runs between 18 and 23 miles more often than he does 12 and 17. So I could just write that out. Mr. Hartwell runs between 18 and 23 miles more often than he does 12 to 17 miles. That's it. This is not an inference. It's not inferring what kind of shape Mr. Hartwell is. It's purely an observation based on what the data gives me. If I take a look at the next one, this is where it kind of becomes rough. I'm going to take a look here. Um, Mr. Hartwell, I'm going to focus in on the 12 to 17 again. Mr. Hartwell ran between... 12 and 17 miles. Now, I'm going to follow this bar across the top line of this bar. I'm going to say that's three. So Mr. Harwell between, ran between 12 and 17 miles three times. I am done. That is all that question required of you, to write two true statements, essentially observations, using a science term, about this data on the histogram. All right, hope this helps prepare you for the assessment on Thursday and Friday. Take care.